The Aeneid is a tale of three cities, rising or falling, Troy, Carthage, and Rome. And they are all linked by some wonderful cunning that Virgil puts up front in Aeneid 1 and 2. In the introductory poem, the first 11 lines of the epic, Virgil announces that he will tell the story of the foundation of Rome. And then, on line 12, his story begins. Once an old city existed. Urbs antiqua fort. Now, of course, the reader who's just read the poem will assume this must be Rome. Um, but then the lines go on. Once an old city existed, and Tyrian settlers controlled it, Carthage. So this story is not beginning with the ancient city of Rome, but with its old enemy, Carthage. And then the city complications develop. Carthage is, as Virgil says, actually run by people who were originally from Tyre in Phoenicia, that's modern Lebanon. Carthage is then a colony from another city. And this colonial status is underlined by a wonderful translinguistic joke. Some of you may know this. Carthago, in the Punic language spoken by Phoenicians, means new town. So this is an ancient town to Virgil's Roman readers, but it is a newly settled colony in the time frame of the Aeneid. This confusion is then picked up in Aeneid 2, when Aeneas, who's now telling his own stories about the past, says of Troy, who could translate into words that night's disaster and killings? Who could shed tears that express those oceans of pain that engulfed us? That day, an old city died after so many years of dominion. Urbs Antiqua Ruit. So that old city that we first read about has now become Troy. And it's not just old, but it's gone. So Troy is an ancient city that is known, above all, not for its existence, but for its fall. In Latin, not through it, but through it. 